My name's Jay from Driftworks and this is a one year update on my BMW E30. What's oh, a good car. So viewers that have been around a year or so will probably have seen this car before. It's something I picked up uh, as a bit of a project. Let me just run through what it is for people who haven't seen it before. So it's a 1988 E30 316, not I, or was an E30 which was sort of converted into a track car when I got it, but then I got carried away. So it's got a nice welding roll cage from Must World Motorsport near Hereford. A um, couple of bucket seats, steering wheel, shifter on the inside. It's got not a 316, not I anymore in it. car actually came with this. It's M52 2.8. It's got a map on it to suit the M50 manifold that it's got. Since the last videos, it's had uh, E46 M3 radiator fitted. I've got some adjustments to do at this point to that. It's got a separate header tank down there, but I, I need to extend the lid up a little bit. It's got different front brake pads in it to when I first built it. It's on Hawk DTC 60s now. Recommend them to anyone, fantastic pads. I'm about to order a set of the same Hawks for the back because it's very front biased at the moment, very easy to lock the front wheels on track. So I'm hoping that removing the red stuff junk in the bin. Uh, we'll get some proper pads in the back and hope that levels it up a bit. Um, the might, you might, I don't know if you've noticed, but there is a pile of a few bits here. This bit, most annoyingly. And um, I think we'll put it up in the air and I'll show you why that is out. But before we dip underneath, it's probably time to ro 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 roll some beats and uh, have a little montage of some of the fun I've had in this car over the last year. Red flag. No panic. No panic. It wasn't me. Told you it's a ripper. Anyway, we're underneath because the last track that I did in Blyton, probably not the last track that I did, probably every track that I've ever done, I've been pouring fuel out of the thing, but didn't stop in time to notice. So the last day I did at Blyton, I ended up with a big puddle of fuel underneath the car when I pulled back into the pits. Insert photo here. And haven't really had time, been trying to get the Mustang ready to go on the road, so haven't had time to uh, get it up to work and get the tank out of it, but now I have. It seems the overflow from the fuel tank is, that focuses, blocked up with a self-tapper, not plumbed back into the tank. I shall put that back into the tank. I've also ordered the big, I think it's a 20 mil uh, external uh, vent pipe that goes up to the fur neck. I've got that coming from BMW. Moving on. The other problem I've had is these nuts at the bottom of the back shop's coming loose. Um, it did have a knock that I was ignoring quite nicely, but now I've got it on the ramp, um, I have noted that one of these bolts was falling out. I mean, not ideal, not ideal, but there's not a lot of movement in the uh, in the bush on the bottom of these BCs. It's quite a solid thing, not a rubber, not a rubber bush like you would expect. To fix that. I mean, not necessary to fix that. The BCs have been fine, to be fair. We've got a set over here of E30 HSDs to test. These are the rears. Fronts are there, but I have... I couldn't just put them on. I've been uh, just going to give the fronts a quick lick of paint before I uh, fit them. Obviously, you know, I laid them out perfectly, like some sort of infomercial. <laughs> Anyway, tonight's we're going to be fitting the backs, then I'm off for the weekend and next week we'll get the front on once the paint's dry. That's the back apart. I love the backs on there, it's nice and easy. Um, yeah, there's, there's the two shocks next to each other. As, as you can see before, I said the BC had this tiny bush, it's sort of like a nylon thing, it's got not much articulation to be fair. HSD has a proper rubber bush in it, so hopefully that'll stop my uh, coming loose issue. 
Um, I've also gone up quite a lot on spring rate. I can't remember the spring rates in the BCs. I've got a fin, it's a six kilogram. And we're going up to a 12 on the back. So that should stop the car rolling over a bit in the corner, shouldn't it? Even though I've set these the same sort of length as the BCs, I'm just gonna put the shock on without the spring now and just check the bump stops working at the right time. And then we'll get on with putting the springs in and do the other side. Was Taylor playing an SR like a trumpet? Disgusting. Taylor! What a terrible noise. Why is he still going? What's the matter with him? Disappointing old man. Anyway, just in case you weren't paying attention last time, the way you check the bump stops on these is fit the shock, no spring, wheel on, jack the wheel up, make sure the bump stop on the shock comes in before the wheel hits the body. Simple as that. That's the first go. Got tons of room above the wheel at the moment, so I'm going to uh, shorten the uh, shock a little bit. Move the wheel up a bit more in the arch. Sort of throwing a spanner in the works. That's sitting on the bump stop. I think we're going to need a bit of a shorter damper. You can see the ride height there, just about a centimetre of tyre showing. And I've got all the room in the world above it. And then this side, that's ride height with the spring in. So you know, what's that, 20, 20 mil of travel? Not enough, not enough. So, I think I'll finish painting those front hubs and that's it for this week. We'll uh, deal with it again on Tuesday. We've had some discussions today about what we're going to do with the back. Um, and all of it requires more fabrication. So I'm going to move on to the front tonight. Uh, here is a old BC and the new HSD. I mean, they basically look the same. Both of them are a, a weld on kit. So when this kit becomes available and if you buy the BC kit, you have to chop down the standard E30 strut and um, if that focuses, weld it to the hub, which has been done on these and yeah, I painted them the other day and now they look quite nice. So this one is ready to go on. This one I prepared earlier and is on. And there's that side. So the other little problem I've got is the brake, uh, the heat from the brake disc keeps melting the track rod end dust boot. So I'm going to replace that and then try and come up with something ingenious to protect it. There's not a lot of room between the disc and the um, track rod end on this conversion. So we'll see how I get on. Moving on to the back. Here's the bottom brackets now in pieces. They've been on the lathe. Had that cone taken out of them which should move the shock up uh, around about 30 mil. So simply got to make some top caps for that out of these. Um, do that on the lathe and then get Craig to weld all those bits back together and I can try them on the car. In other news, the bits from BMW are here. So there is the big tank breather and I've got a couple of the little yellow washers for the gear linkage as well because that's always been a bit sloppy. I've got a new operator today. <laughs> Hence the, uh, the blue spinny things coming off it. <laughs> right, okay. Does that mean you're doing it wrong? I'm sure he'll say, You broke my tip next time, isn't Yeah, it? he will, yeah, he will have him another tip as usual. I'm doing it the correct way in um, nitrile gloves with my tassels dangling. Squinting behind your glasses? Yeah, yeah. Stand, you stand to the side of it. Yeah, in case anything comes out. Awesome. These two just getting it done. You got a plan? Oh, oh you're filming. Here, no, it's good. Filming. Filming. No, I thought I'd get it for your videos. So there yeah. you go. We've got a plan. We've got some things. I made some things with a little thing on them and the thing goes in there and fits oh, really right. nicely. And now Craig's going to do a thing. I'm going to blind myself. You can look through the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to stare at the light. He hasn't, been, he hasn't even been that mean about my lathe work. So. No. <laughs> well, be to be fair, he laid those so he can't be mean about the prep, can he? I didn't. You did lay those. Yeah. I made them big yeah, did there. Yeah, yeah. No, they're perfect. Exactly. Time for paint. Ta-da! Just like that. Better get them fitted. I ran into another couple of tweaks last night. Um, first thing was 
the adjuster. Oh, have I got one to hand now? Now I've started talking. Probably not. Anyway. Yeah, basically I was at the point where the adjuster was bottoming out uh, on the spring perch before the bump stop was coming in on the shock. So I think I've solved that now by machining down some E36 adjusters. And Phil over here is just about to test the, to actually test the spring brake because the springs are very close to being coil bound. So we're going to see what we're supplying people. So like a danger cage. A safe that cage, so I made that. Jay's work of art. Yeah, yeah. we'll see if, it, see if it comes out and tries to get you now. Yeah, to be fair, it's never come out and tried to get me, but I used to do this without a cage. Because um, spring rates are weird. There's um, lots of different types of springs, like linear and progressive and stuff like that. The, just so we always know where we're at with our own springs in comparison to other stuff, it's always just worth measuring them because um, then you know back to back you're measuring it in exactly the same way and you're calculating it in the same way. So yeah, we're just going to see whether this uh, shorter spring is in any way what we think it's going to be. Or what we're told it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what we've been selling it as. <laughs> yeah, stand by for danger. <laughs> Maybe. I need to insert a battery, that's what I need to do. But... 40 seconds. Yeah. It's going to run out of stroke before you get to the spring. <laughs> I mean, we probably should explain what we're doing. We're compressing the spring a known amount, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, which we can measure with a ruler, and then we check the scale here to see how much pressure that's putting on the plate. Yeah, so you set yourself up in a situation like that with a tiny bit of preload where everything sort of in a straight line. And I will add, our, our measurement of, was it eight kilogram per millimeter, isn't it? That's yeah, what we're looking at. So we can measure how far the spring compresses so, and yeah. then see how much pressure it puts on the uh, scale. So essentially you zero the pad, so that's now at zero. And you've got yourself one straight edge, which you keep in a nice safe spot leaning up against there. And then you put your face as close as you can to it. To my safety fence. <laughs> and you get yourself. In fact, actually, I need to re-zero this again. It's always more difficult on these uh, on springs with a tail on them. Um, oh, of course, you, can't, you yeah. can't push flat on the top, can you? No. Zero. And you're measuring 30, 135 mil there. Get that too. This one is the least accurate at this point, but yeah, it's saying that's a, a 9.5 kilo spring. Okay. Uh, which is pretty decent, so we'll just measure that again. But not 12, as Rich told me it was. No, but that, uh, in the first bit of a spring, it'll always come up lower. Anyway. Right, okay. On a spring like this, if you're talking about a normal coilover spring, you'd expect to see um, more consistency. Oh, is that because of the shape of this yeah. top of spring? Right, okay. So just zero that again. Take my right, again. and then you measure the... Pretty accurate with this. Five, so yeah, eight, be, eight there, 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 yeah, about yeah which is what nine. is written on the spring. So, well, that would be a nine. Right, okay, that and they're, they're labelled up as eight and a half, aren't they? Is that what they are? Yeah, that's what they say on them. But at least we know now. So we'll get one more of those. Looking yeah. pretty linear to me. That Roughly eight, eight, eight and a half, half yeah. So Which labelled is... as an eight and a half, and we're seeing eight, eight and a half. Well, to that's nine. a good start. Should we measure the BC one just to be sure? Yeah. All right, BC is loaded. Zero. Zero all. Hang on, let it let it compute. Yeah, zero. Okay. Get that ten mil. Yeah, it's about eight, 80, so yeah. Okay, so it's on eight zero, is it? Eight zero, That's yeah. And we'll just go down another 10. Yeah, 158, so. 60, yeah. yeah. So eight. And then we're we'll... Am I doing bad maths 80, as usual? Yeah, still 80 kilos. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's... About again, right. Within... Nice, and, nice and linear and yeah. Look, listed as an eight, was it? Eight and a half, I think it's, okay, it's so from yeah, the part number. Comes out at an eight, that's... There or thereabouts. Yep. Right, into the stores. Quite useful having this here. 
<laughs> for this sort of thing. Excuse the mess. This is the side you don't normally see. This is the bit that actually funds this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we've got we have absolutely loads of springs here. Yeah, if so. anybody ever needs springs, you know. And this isn't even half of it. Like those are full of springs as well. All the boxes. Uh, we've got more upstairs. We've got more in unit six of the main ones because some springs we sell like 450 a year of one particular uh, length and weight, uh, depending on what kit you go And we can um, help you if you buy a set of coilovers, can't we? You can spec a yeah, different yeah. spring rate if that's what you want. Yeah, I mean, we've got really quite extreme stuff, right down to, right up to sort of 18 kilo 125. That'll do for the back, that'll I mean, get sliding. <laughs> how, how, how much DTM do you want? That's the question. All DTM. How much bounce? So like all full DTM. <laughs> it's I want like a battle, no, my, battle no number plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no suspension. All your suspension is going to be in your tyre. Yes. I know you've got to run um, 30 profile tyres as well to do that. So I think realistically you don't want to go crazy. No, I mean, I've, I've got Tens or 12s. I've got 14s in the front, which may yeah. be too stiff. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'll go 12s. That, that's how we scientifically choose this. We just go, maybe I'll try 12s. That's how I did mine. And my yeah. is very, very unusual weights. I mean, um, to be fair, they are... A thing that you could change at a track if you wanted to. Really easily. Yeah, yeah especially the on the back. Yeah. yeah. I've, done, I've done it at the track before, and mine's coilover, which is way more complicated. This, yeah. actually, because it's inboard, you should still be able to just uh, drop the damper off and it'll fall down. The back can, through. the front's a bit of a pain. You've got to wind yeah. the shock in to get the, the clearance. But so no, we'll, we'll try those. 12. Yeah, so if, if anybody buy. buys this kit, it'll probably have a spring that looks more Less like that and more like this yeah but you can change it to what you want yeah so well, if this works which you know well nothing this, else has so. you, you, you see in the real r d here right your real yeah. product development side <laughs> yeah and if you do buy this kit and it's terrible it's nothing to do with us <laughs> that's two springs on little little wiggle just out we'll go up a little bit further so it's not on the axle uh, is that what's knocking it's, okay yeah don't worry. <laughs> yeah. so still thinking this is too low. That is too low. Isn't it? And it's, I mean, it has got a bit of weight in the boot, which I need to remove, but um, yeah, I think we've got room for an adjuster at that. That's pretty stiff as well. That's good. Is that what you want? Yeah, I want it like not to roll over and wear my bumper out in corners. It's, it is still moving. Yeah, the front still moves yeah. as well. So now I'm on a 12, 14. So most people wouldn't want to run, I'm 15, wouldn't want to run this ride height, but um, so we know we've got the correct stroke for this ride height and you can just remove the spring platform adjusters and get this ride height. Yeah. So it looks all right. And very firm. If it was, so if you had a 125 length spring that was a lower uh, spring rate, so if these are 12s, yeah. if you went for 10s, this would sit a bit lower. If you went for 8s, it would sit even lower because obviously it compresses the spring easily. Yeah. So yeah, interesting. No, that's a good start. Business call. Business time. Uh, Phil's completed his business now and gone home for the day, so I'm back on this. Uh, where do I start? Where have we got to? First thing, I've done a bit of research. It's quite unusual um, on an E30 to have a rear, a rear spring in the standard position that's softer than the front in the coilover position. Um, because of where the spring is on the arm, it sits inboard, so the, the motion ratio on the spring is different. So for that reason, I'm going to scrap my last plan of going for a 12 at the back and a 14 up front. I'm going to run 12 back and front as a start. The BC kit uh, shipped with a 9k front and 8.5 on the rear. That's always felt really soft, so we're going up. Yeah, I'm gonna go up to 12s all around to start with, with the option to go to 14s or up to 20s, I think, if, uh, if we need to. So we've had to design a way to locate the spring on the E30 arm. Uh, we've got room with this 120 mil spring for an adjuster on the bottom with two locking collars, in fact, at the moment. Uh, and we are about, well, I have done a drawing to get a top isolator like this, Mad. This is a Fiesta one, because it's something that we've got in stock. But yeah, I've done a drawing there to send off to have um, a rubber pad made that will fit the E30. You know, I'm gonna get on with these and then we'll finish this video off. Now it's time to fix something that's been on my mind since I got this car. You know, it keeps you up twitching at night. Whoever installed these shocks in the first place installed them with a 12 mil headed nut on them. So I can't live with that on the BMW. It's got to have a 13. Boom shakalaka. There it is. Finally. Uh, we've got somewhere. Um, I've chosen to run the adjuster on the bottom just because it locates better um, this way. And to be honest, it's as easy to drop the shock off and adjust your ride height as it is to try and do it with load. 
um, on the spring because they're always fairly tight like that. Are you wrecking my video? I thought you had the you video noisy one. monster! I thought you had the radio on. Sorry, what, does it sound like the radio? Yeah, yeah. No like problem. It was. News? <laughs> Don't make me sick. <laughs> so, as I showed on my drawing, the final design will have a location um, washer or hat for the top of the spring so that it can't slop about, and that will also uh, isolate the noise a bit from inside the car. On my car, I'm not going to worry too much if it clanks about, but I'm sure customers will. Well, there it is, back down on its wheels for the first time in a week or two. Probably two weeks now, I've been messing with this, an hour or two a night. Turning around, eagle eyed amongst you may have noticed uh, the high five's gone off the ramp and we've got another M3. Interestingly, I was talking to Phil earlier, he runs uh, HSDs on this car. Um, HSD monopros on his, we're testing a dual tech kit on mine, but if that works and fits, it's easy for us to. Order, order the same sizes in a Monopro uh, and get them both in stock. But yeah, he runs a 12 kilo spring front and back on this, so uh, that's the same as mine. The only difference is he's on a true rear uh, coilover setup, so we'll, we'll see, we'll see. I need to test it and see if it understeers or anything. Ride height can't be set just yet. Um, the car still has no fuel tank, no fuel, no prop, drive shaft if you're foreign. Um, no exhaust on it, so all that's going to add extra weight and bring the back down a little bit. So I need to wait to set the final ride height and do the alignment then. Hopefully I haven't made a car that was really good, really bad. And I was going to carry on to the end of this video and get the car back in one piece, but we need a video for this Tuesday, so here it is. You've had me for two weeks, happy days. I was going to enjoy something. No. Boys. Happy boys! Happy boys! <laughs> As usual, if you do enjoy the videos, you don't need telling that you've got a thumbs up and subscribe. Everybody knows that by now. I mean, oh, just this world. Ugh. Please log on to driftworks.com. See if we can help you out with something nice for your car. That's what funds all this. And uh, we'd be more grateful than the thumbs up and likes. Until next time, I'll see you in a week or two, but big things are coming for this. That's worth subscribing for.